What's up, YouTube? It's nice to be back. This is Marco from, I guess, Luxury Bazaar. It still sounds uh, crazy to me to even say that. But yeah, I'm doing one last video on this YouTube channel. And uh, this is kind of my farewell, my goodbye, if you will. Um, I wasn't actually planning on making another video. I was really just going to keep uploading as I have on the Luxury Bazaar YouTube channel. But a good friend of mine, shout out to my bro, Toyota Mo asked me to do one last collection review for him. So I felt like I had no choice but to say yes. So yeah, this is going to be the last video, at least on this channel that you'll be seeing me doing. Obviously, I've been doing a lot of content, as I'm sure you've seen on the Luxury Bazaar YouTube channel. If you're not subscribed, I'll put the link down below, uh, as well as my new Instagram and all those kind of things. So be sure to check it out, of course. And um, yeah, I just want to take a moment, obviously, just to reminisce because it's been, you know, a pretty crazy kind of two plus year journey uh, starting out really on this channel and then, you know, eventually moving on and working in the watch industry. And I never really had pictured that or even imagined it being a possibility. You know, I'm from Montreal. There's not much of a watch market here in Montreal at all. So, you know, to be a part of, you know, one of the biggest organizations in the world and, and at the same time working for somebody who I find is not somebody I look up to as a mentor and as somebody who I looked up to kind of as a thought leader in the watch industry, but to work for the person I feel is the king of the gray market, Roman Sharp. It's a, it's an honor. It's a blessing. And honestly, everybody there from you know Roman to Adrian to Anna, Alex, Nick, Sabina, Chris, everybody there is just so kind and gracious and, and just amazing. So yeah, I'm really, really blessed. And you know, this is kind of my final send off. I guess I have to take a moment to thank all of you guys because if I'm in the position that I'm in today, you know, in part, it's definitely because of all of you guys and the support you've shown me over the years. So I'm extremely grateful and, and blessed to have you guys a part of my life. And yeah, man, I, I look forward to hopefully meeting each and every single one of you uh, one day in person. And uh, yeah, uh, now I'm able to pursue my dream of, of being able to do what I love every single day. It's been it's been nothing short but amazing. So thank you. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart. And it's, uh, it's really, really humbling. So let's get into the review. Enough of the soft stuff. And this is for my good friend, as I mentioned, Toyota Mo, whose collection is just, I don't, I mean, I don't even know what to say. This is just outstanding, in my opinion. We're, we're discussing this um, kind of over text. And we were saying, you know, he feels this is really, he built a top tier a steel collection. And honestly, I couldn't couldn't disagree more. I mean, even let's just take a minute to reminisce a little bit, Mo. But this is from a, an image from actually when you got the LV box. Shout out to the LV box, one of the best boxes in the game, just absolutely beautiful um, with that checkered pattern. I just love it. And this was, you know, an all this is from May 2nd, 2021. So we're talking about what, a year and four months ago. This is an all steel Rolex collection to see you know, how your collection has evolved from this in about, you know, a year and four months, it's nothing short of mesmerizing. And I really think like all the choices that you've made are top shelf, top notch quality and all, all the upgrades that you've made really are as good as it gets. And, and I couldn't agree more that you've really built a top tier uh, steel sports collection. So this is what his collection looks like at the minute. Uh, so from left to right, top to bottom, he's got a Submariner Starbucks, the 126610 LV. He's got the 116500 Panda. He's got the Rolex GMT Master 2, 126710 BLRO, the Pepsi on Jubilee, which I personally prefer. I think the Jubilee, as I've said time and again on this channel and on many other channels, I think it's the best bracelet on the market. Uh, just so comfortable, so light to wear. And I actually have it on my Bruce Wayne. He's also got the 124300 Tiffany OP, the 41 millimeter. Man, I, I remember I told you maybe like a year ago before like they discontinued it when this watch was trading. You know, actually, this is back in December. The, these were trading like around the 30 to $40,000 mark. I was like begging on my hands and knees, Mo, sell it now, sell it now. So it's one of those I feel is definitely a keeper in the collection, one that you held on to and you cherish. And you know, I got to be honest with you. Wow. Like I, I, I respect you so much more for having kept that watch, especially, you know, considering where prices were trading at and how much I, I really begged you to sell this watch back at the peak in December. And then we've also got the Omega Seamaster, the great white or the polar dial, which I think is, you know, one of the best kind of beater watches on the market today, especially on that rubber strap, that integrated rubber strap look is just a killer design. The way that 
black bezel, the black rubber strap, and then you got that contrast of that stark white dial. I think it just works so well. And then, you know, we go and branch out away from kind of your ordinary or typical kind of steel Rolex and, and Seamaster, uh, Omega Seamaster, and branch out into really the high horology kind of segment of this, which is your Patek 5212, one of the most beautiful watches, I think, on the market today. One of my favorite modern Pateks right up there with the 5235 steel case, weekly calendar, that kind of font, which is so atypical from what you would expect from kind of a, a more stuffy and, if you will, classic brand like Patek Philippe. I think this is just a beautiful watch, works so well. You have the Omega Snoopy, Silver Snoopy 50th anniversary. You know, I, I'm a purist. I love the Omega Speedmaster Head White, the 321. I was actually speaking with my good friend Juan. Shout out to Juan if you're watching this. Um, it, it's becoming harder and harder for me, even as a purist, to pick the 321 over the Snoopy. There's just something about that Snoopy that has, uh, no pun intended, this gravitational pull that is just, you know, unmistakable. It's such a beautiful watch, especially on a bracelet. I think it suits the watch so well. And the strap is nice too. Don't get me wrong, but I think the bracelet is definitely where it's at. He's got the Vacheron Overseas 4500V, the blue dial, which, I mean, nothing much to say about that. I think it's my it's personally my favorite high horology sports watch. He's got the VC Hysterix 1942. Again, for anybody who's watched this channel, I think they know how much I love that watch. I think it's one of the very best values on the market today. Geneva Seal, manual wind movement with a 65-hour power reserve, triple calendar in a steel case with those teardrop lugs. Just an absolute stunner. And of course, everybody needs that beater watch, which is the kind of PRX. Now, for the purposes of this collection, listen, you know, it's a PRX is a great watch, obviously, and I don't, I don't want to sound like a watch snob kind of thing, but, you know, for the purpose of this collection, I'm just going to exclude it. So I will take it out of the collection, uh, but it is still there, and I would still like to see you keep it as part of the collection because I think it makes sense ultimately um, just to have that kind of no-nonsense knock-around watch, even though maybe the Seamaster can fulfill that same role. It's always nice to have one also on a bracelet that you're not afraid to kind of bang around and scratch up. So definitely love the PRX. So this is how the collection stands. And again, I, I keep going back to the conversation we had where you said, you know, you really feel like you built a top tier steel collection. And honestly, I, I couldn't disagree. I couldn't agree more, really. You've got this Starbucks, which is the Submariner. You've got the Panda Daytona and you've got the GMT Master 2. You hit the three best watches from Rolex. Uh, you've got the Tiffany OP, you know, which is technically like the entry level Rolex model. But, you know, this is one of the hardest to get watches at the time that this was released. I think it only had like a two year production run total. So, I mean, this is this is a watch I was literally begging Mo to sell at 40 plus, you know, 30 to 40 thousand dollars. And he just he was like, no way, man, I love this watch too much. So it's one I feel that just can't leave the collection because I think it's just so closely associated to you as a collector and you just love it so much. I could never in good conscience recommend you to sell it. The Polar Seamaster, not much needs to be said. I think one of the best beater watches. And then again, you go to the high horology kind of segment of it, uh, obviously excluding the Snoopy, but you know everything else, the 5212, the Overseas and the History 1942. I think those are three, you know, three amazing choices. You really couldn't have chosen any better when it comes to steel high horology pieces. I think in this collection, really, there's only one thing missing, and I think most people would really agree, and that is you've got your Rolex covered, you've got your Omegas covered, you've got your Paddock, you've got your two VCs. I think there's one other watch, right? And listen, I'm a big fan of independence. You know, generally speaking, I would always recommend people at least try, maybe take a, a jump into the unknown and try out an independent. But knowing you, knowing the kind of collector you are, I understand that space is not really for you. It's not something that really speaks to you or that would really do anything uh, for you. So, you know, I, it's just not something, again, in good conscience, I could recommend you uh, pulling the trigger on. So if I had to say one watch is missing, I think it's it's the Royal Oak. You know what I mean? I think it, there's no question about it. And I would get it in a black dial specifically. I think that there's two models that you can choose from. Again, looking back at your collection, you know, you got the Panda Daytona, you got the Polar Seamaster, the 5212 has a white dial. Uh, the Snoopy has a white dial and even the historic 1942 has a kind of creamish champagne type dial, but, you know, more towards white than black. So I think actually you're missing maybe an additional black dial in the collection. And, you know, relatively speaking, the black Royal Oaks are a lot better value than, say, for example, a blue. You know, you're going to pay at least 10 plus thousand less. And 
I think there's really two models I would personally recommend. Now, one of them is the 26120ST. That's the one on the left. That's personally one of my favorite AP Royal Oaks, you know, period. It's 39 millimeter case. You get a JLC movement, dual time complication in that 39 millimeter jumbo size. I think this is just an absolutely beautiful watch. They knock the layout of the dial. It just wears perfectly. Uh, it, it's just a stunning watch. But the only problem is, is you have a GMT Master II. And, you know, the Royal Oak, let's be honest, it's, you know, kind of not a very great travel watch. It just isn't, I would tell you, bring a Rolex or even bring, you know, the Seamaster as your travel watch all day, every day over a Royal Oak. So, you know, is the complication necessary? Probably not. And so in that case, I lean more towards uh, something like a three-hand Royal Oak. And I really debated between the 15300, 15400, and obviously the one pictured on the screen, the 15500. And, you know, the 15300 is nice. Uh, it is the first in-house Royal Oak uh, with an in-house movement. I like the watch overall. I know Cap has this watch. But there's one thing that irks me is that the matching, the, the date wheel, the, not having a matching date wheel just really, really irks me. And especially the price that these go for, it's just not one I would prefer. So I, I was really kind of scaled down to the 15400 and the 15500. Obviously, the 15400, much better value for money. But I, I just don't think you can go wrong with the 15500. Again, very short production run. We're talking about four or five years in a black dial, very clean aesthetic. You get that newer movement, which I think is just so much nicer uh, than the movement in the 15400. Much cleaner design and look to it overall. Um, does it wear big? Yes, but I think you could definitely pull it off. I don't think it should be an issue, you know, kind of size wise, especially since uh, you wear 40 mil 41 millimeter Starbucks pretty comfortably. You know, I would say they wear, maybe it wears like a tad bigger, but honestly, it's not that big of a difference overall. But yeah, I, I think that that would be my only recommendation. Other than that, I really don't see what else you can add to really get up there. I think you've got the horological pedigree in the 5212 and, of course, that uh, historic 1942. You've got your high horology sports watches. You've got a couple of chronographs, two of the most iconic in the Daytona and the, uh, the Speedmaster. You've got arguably your two most iconic divers in the Submariner and the Seamaster. The most iconic, you know, GMT watch, the GMT Master 2. You've got kind of your hype watch, but you bought that, you know, at retail uh, before all of the crazy hype and you didn't even <laughs> sell it, which is crazy, still crazy to me to think about it when prices really hit their peak and I was imploring you to do so. So I think there's really only one other thing I would tell you to do, and that is to really complete the Trinity. That is what makes sense. And I think it brings greater balance to the collection, adding a black dial Royal Oak. Again, you add to the pedigree of your collection. Would I love to see you add an independent? Yes. But again, I know the type of collector that you are. And, you know, I, I just don't see you with an independent. Would I see you with a Moser or something else like that? I, not really. That's not the kind of collector that you are. So it's just not something I would recommend. I think adding a black dial 15500 would really cap off your collection nicely. And, you know, from here, I think you can be really picky, right, with respect to what direction do you want to go next? Do you want to add maybe a high horology chronograph, you know, something like a manual wine chrono, maybe, but is it necessary? Probably not. Um, you know, again, you could be really, really picky from here on out. I think this is a really well-balanced uh, 10 piece watch collection. You hit all the high notes. you got all the classic watches, all the ones off the beaten path as well that really give your collection character and charm. And man, I, I got to give you props. This is just an absolutely insane collection. And uh, yeah, that, that's the review. I mean, there's nothing else really for me to say. It's just add the 15500. And, and I think that's that's really a great cap off uh, to the collection. So that's the review, guys. Again, I just want to take a moment to thank each and every one of you. Again, if I'm in the position that I am today, it's be in part very much in part because of you guys. So thank you very much. Again, I'm truly blessed to have an opportunity to have the platform I have. And again, please, if you haven't subscribed to the Luxury Bazaar YouTube channel, I'm going to link it down below. If you haven't followed me, on my new Instagram, marcof.lb. Please do so. Guys, one last time, this is Marco. Thanks so much for watching. And of course, as always, you have to wear your watches. This is what it's all about, guys. Love you guys. Take care.